is New Day Northwest. Now, here's Margaret Larson. Hey, good morning, everybody. We kick things off today with a true Seahawks legend. During his 12 seasons in Seattle, Walter Jones stood tall on that offensive line, allowing fewer than two sacks per season. Can you believe that? When he was inducted into the NFL Hall of Fame in 2014, he was called the best offensive tackle to ever play the game. He's a great ambassador for the Hawks, and he's loved by 12s the world over. Now, though, he's on a mission to pay tribute to his good friend Cortez Kennedy, the legendary Seahawks defensive tackle and Hall of Famer who passed away earlier this year. Walter's focusing his mission on Cortez's giant heart and his habit of calling younger players to check in on them and to make sure they're doing okay. He wants to make sure that the players form lifelong brotherships. We are thrilled and honored to have him with us today. Please welcome Walter Jones. How you doing? Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, you too. Thank, Thank you for having me. Good to see here. How you doing? <laughs> I'm doing good. I'm doing good. You really are so beloved around here. Do you feel it? Do you I take feel that it. in? I, I enjoy it. You know, I, I've been here for almost 20 years, so yep. I call this home now, so I definitely enjoy it. Do you miss football at all? Uh, I miss it for probably, what, two seconds? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you don't miss Monday mornings, exactly. would you? Exactly. And, and, the, and, the, and the, all the, the banging and hitting, so I don't miss that. So. Yeah. Do you watch? I, I watch, I'm an I'm a avid fan, so I love to watch the Seahawks and see what they're doing and stuff, so it's awesome. Do you have a favorite on the Hawks right now? <laughs> oh, man, I like the whole team. You know, I like, you know, I'm offensively, so I like those guys. So, right. But, you know, for me, when I was playing, I enjoyed hanging around with the defensive guys, so I understand the Legion of Boom and the stuff that the oh, defense man. is doing. So That's the best. I enjoy that part of the game, too, now. I never even thought I'd care about defense until we had the Legion of Boom, and now all of a sudden that's one of my favorite parts it, of the it's game. Kind of, it's kind of like it makes it like a rock star. So you get you get you get involved in what they're doing and how right. they're playing the game. So it makes it fun. And it, you don't just watch the part where you have the ball. Now, so you had this deal where you didn't go to training camp very much. <laughs> about you know I think it's part of the game you know we're going through contract negotiations and stuff so you know you you was trying to make sure that you was doing the right things to, to take care of your family so that's just part of the game but you knew that you know once that get done you can come out and and play and and, but, and, and it kind of helped my career you know I missed a couple of, uh, of training camps and it kind of prolonged my career I, I always thought that it was amazing that you would do that and then the season would start and you'd play I'm sorry, better than people who've been to training <laughs> You know, I, I, I tell people all the time that, you know, what happened to me on that situation was that I was with the same offensive coordinator, the same coaches, so it made it pretty easy to come in and, 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 and get right back into the, the form of playing football because yeah. there wasn't no change of coaches and stuff, so that was a blessing for me because I didn't have to learn a new offense when I came in. The O-line has been under a lot of scrutiny mm -hmm. the last few years, and um, what can you tell us about how complex it is to play there and what maybe needs to happen for that to be a more successful group? Oh man, I think it's just, uh, I think a lot of times you get spoiled. You know, when I, we was playing, we, we, as an offensive unit, we did a great job. And you, for me, I thought it was awesome that we got fans to, to understand what offensive linemen mm -hmm. do. So now, you know, fans watch the game and they understand that now. So I think it's just a situation where you got a lot of young guys that's still trying to learn the game of football. I think as offensive linemen, once you play in this game, you, you need about three years, so these guys are getting into that third year, fourth right. year. So I think that's just experience. I said this team, go, this offensive line this year is going to be better than they was last year because they get that experience. So I think this year they're going to go out there and compete and be able to go out there and protect Russell and, and do some great things. Can you describe the split second nature of the decision making you make as an offensive lineman? I just, it, it, I think it's, it's come from you know being a student of the game. I think you you have to you have to take your hat off to the coaches, preparing those guys and getting those guys ready for each each everything that can happen in that split second. I think as you know they always say that the linemen are the, the smartest guys on the team. So I think as an offensive lineman, you just got to know, you got to almost anticipate what they're going to do to you. So I think as a great offensive lineman, they learn that quickly that, you know, they're not going to beat you on their first move. They're going to beat you on the second and third move. So you, as a as a player, you have to be a student of the game and, and know so that. So that you're thinking that far you're ahead. You're thinking that far ahead, you know. And, and if you meet any offensive lineman, they always thinking like that. You're always thinking ahead, what are they going to do in the third quarter, what are they going to do in the fourth quarter, right. and the great ones figure that out and they'd be great out there on the football you field. You guys are probably good chess players in that yes. case. <laughs> yes. So let's talk about Cortez Kennedy. Mm -hmm. I mean, what a what a shock for fans, yeah. and I can't even imagine what it's like for his friends to mm -hmm. have lost him so early in life. Um, tell me a bit about that experience. It was tough. You know, it was a situation where, you know, you, you, you didn't know it, and for me it was a shock because I got the call, I got the text message, and it was tough, you know, and for me it was, it was more like, 
for me was a, a buffer. You know, for me, when I, I got into the Hall of Fame, when I became uh, a consistent player on the team, you know, he was the guy. When I came in as a rookie, you know, Tez was the, 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 the I guess you say, the big man on campus type mm -hmm. guy. You know, he had, had proven himself and was a, a dominant defensive player. So for me coming in at Seattle, go, sure. so it was just a situation where, you know, I wanted to, to gain his respect. And, and you do that by on the football field. So right. that's what I did. And we became lifelong friends. And so, you know, and then when I got, when he got into the Hall of Fame, you know, and I, I that was my first time going there to see his induction. So it was awesome. And then he told me I was going to be next. And kind of like, he made it easy for me. You know, you meet a lot of these guys at the Hall of Fame that you watch playing up. So now that you be wearing the same gold jacket, it was pretty cool. You know, and Tess, what's that buffer for me? You know, he played with those guys. And when I came to the, to Ken, you kind of like you you meet these guys you meet them through tests and he made it easy for me and now you're you're a lifelong friend with these guys that you yeah. watch playing everybody loved him yeah. big heart um describe him as a friend if you would oh man you know i think the thing that that really got me was that he he he, he made everybody feel like they was a part of the team you know as a as a young player you come in into an organization and, and most of the time you're you, you want to connect with the players, but Tez made it so he connected with everybody. Everybody that played, that, that worked upstairs, you know, he connected with those people, the cooks, you know, everybody that was doing everything to make everything work, he made them feel for that part of the team. So for me as a player, that's what you want to do. You always want to be, stay connected to an organization and Tez showed that and as a friend and as, you know, he, anytime I saw him, he, he made it his business to say hello to my family and stuff like that. So as a player, you want to say, that's the way I want right. to do things. I want to be connected and be close to, to people that you, you feel close to. Well, you are how you treat people, Exactly. Right? So you're on this mission now yeah. to sort of help people stay connected. Mm -hmm. And I, it's such a brilliant idea because one of the things that's so inspiring about the way the Seahawks play is that they really are a brotherhood. Yeah. And then you think about, well, how could that be extended beyond football, but mm -hmm. certainly within football over over the course of people's lifetimes. Yeah. What What is your new campaign all about? Oh, uh, it's called 96 Check. You know, it came from a, a interview I did. Uh, I was uh, when, you know, since Ted's passed, I really haven't did any interviews. You know, a lot of, you know, a lot of people wanted you to do interviews and talk about it. But as a friend, you kind of want to respect that. But, you know, I, I finally had did an interview and I was kind of like, okay, now I need to kind of tell my story about Tess, how close we was. And so it kind of started from that. You know, I, I can remember times when he would just call just out of the blue. just, hey, I'm just calling to check on you and I didn't want nothing and stuff like that. And that's kind of how it started that, you know, you, you get so busy in your life and what things going on. And that's understandable because everybody is doing their own thing. But sometimes you just need to sit back and say, hey, let me call this person that I haven't saw for in a, in a long time or haven't talked to. So that's kind of how the, the 96 check started. And so, and, and, and the crazy thing about it, I was doing this interview, this, this lady, I had wore uh, the 96 uh, a sticker on, on my jacket at the Hall of Fame. And this lady came up and asked me, you know, what that's all about. And she wanted to do an interview. And I said, sure, once I get back, I, I'll do the interview. And I was kind of like pushing off because I think it was in my subconscious that I didn't, you know, didn't want to do an interview. And I finally did the interview and I kind of was remembering Taz and how he was just calling. And I said to myself, you know, you never know what person gonna call you and just check on you, that's gonna change things because you deal with so much stuff and you know, that's what I wanna do, just call a player that you went to, to work with, you went to the battles with, that to let them know, hey, I'm here and I'm just checking on you, checking on you, your family and stuff like that and that's how I got started. And just not let people drift away. Just, you know, and you get caught up in work and a lot, a lot of your life and stuff, so and sometimes you just wanna make that call and you, you, you don't know, you know, I, I, I tell a lot of people, what changed me, I was dealing with a lot of stuff with, it, with, with him passing, you know, it's st still a shock to you, like, oh right. man, you can't believe it. You know, you, and you get calls from a lot of people, and the person that really changed me was my mom. I had talked to my mom a lot of times about what was going on, but one day, she just called me and told me, hey, I was just thinking about you, and, and that's what you want to do, that's what you want the, the former player to do. Hey, just call those people and just say, hey, I'm just thinking about you, and, and I, yeah, hopefully that, you know, people, think it's a spontaneous thing and you just call in someone and say I'm just checking on you. 96 was his number. So 96 was his number and we, when we start the initial tomorrow 96 because it's 96 because his number so we want people to just get out and you know it don't have to be former players it can be family members anybody can get out and you want to inspire them to cut out and call someone you haven't talked to or someone that just crossed your mind you know a lot of time you'd be sitting around and someone crossed your mind and, and make that call and, and check on them and just say I'm just checking on you to say hey what's up. Yeah. Tess was by himself when he passed right? Mm -hmm. Did, did that affect you in terms of this? I, I don't know. I don't know if it, that affect me. Just you know, you, you think about a lot of stuff. You know, you don't you don't know the details on what really happened. So you kind of like you try to. You know, hopefully that you know he he didn't suffer. 
you know, that's the one thing you, you think about. And, you know, uh, just, just just to check on, you know, for me, what I do now is if I'm feeling bad, you know, I try to tell players, if you're feeling bad or you're sick, as as players, we're always taught, you know, to not to say nothing, to fight it. You're, you don't want to see them at your weakest, you know, that's just part of playing football because you're always playing hurt, you're playing this. So as a, as, as a human being, that's the same mentality you take when you're not playing football. So I try to teach people now, hey, if you have to go to the doctor, you have to do something. You're not feeling good, tell someone. So if something happened, people are, I said, okay, he was saying this was going on, so you can, you know, let them know, you know, like how you're feeling. Right. You guys are under a lot of pressure to be superhuman, mm -hmm. and we as fans forget you're human yep. beings, and we need to all work on that. And exactly. I, I love the 96 as Tez's number tomorrow as the date, 9-6. Yes. We can all participate, yes. and we'll put up on online exactly how to do that. But thank you for thank reminding you so us Thanks to care me. about one another. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. We need me. more of that. We'll be right back.